Hello everybody, this is, uh, I just wanted to make a short video. I'm going to be in Hebrews, the fifth chapter. I'm going to be verses 11 through uh, 14. I'm going to read them, then I'll probably go back through and say something about them. But it says, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you're dull of hearing. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and it becomes such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to those, to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Uh, I, I was, it says, let me read this again of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. We uh, get older than some people have things wrong with their hearing and um, there seems to be a big communication gap between husband and wife and and the, the wife say, you didn't hear anything I say. And the husband says, I was listening. They was just dull of hearing. My uncle, uh, he, got used to a fan several years ago in the summertime and he he had to have that fan to go to sleep by. He couldn't sleep without it. But when winter came, it ran into a problem because it was cold then. So he just stuck the fan in the closet where he could still hear it and he could go to sleep by it. He wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't count the revolutions of the fan. He was just listening to the racket. So, uh, then it says, for when the time you ought to, verse 12, for when the time you ought to be teachers, you have needed one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. We have people that's older people that, that should be elders, uh, gray-headed, bald-headed, sort of like uh, I'm doing, and uh, we ought to be off of milk. I heard a story about a man and... Uh, he uh, they, he found a he, he found a puppy, and it was just hours old, and he 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 tried to feed it with an eyedropper, and it wasn't working. So he took it to a vet, and he asked the veterinarian, could it live? And the vet said, did it have any of its mother's milk? Did it ever know its mother? And he said, I, I don't know, I don't think so. And he said, well, if he did, if it didn't, it won't make it, because in mother's milk mother's milk the sincere milk of the word in mother's milk there's those things that helps us fight uh, diseases and and it helps our immune system if you don't have this milk the 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 the, the then then you can't build up your immune system people come along with another doctrine you won't have any defense against it you'll just uh, get sick off of what they're uh, putting out there and be har hard to make it. it. Said for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is obeyed. But strong meat belongs to him that is of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. If you don't ever make it to the meat, and you're not on meat, then you will have trouble discerning between good and evil. You'll think that things that's actually are good for you, you'll think that they're bad. You'll think things that's bad are good. Uh, like the Word of God, when people are young in the Lord, they're not so much interested in that. Uh, they'd rather uh, have some other kind of service. But that's that's it's good for you. The chastening hand of the Lord is actually good for you, and that's something that we push, push away. Uh, I know when... Jesus passed by, they, I think they was mending their nets, uh, some of his disciples. And uh, we, we like to have uh, those good services, but we need to slow down. At times like these, for instance, we need to slow down and, and mend our nets. The Word of God is something that will mend our nets, in my opinion. Um, the, there's five senses. I, you, you know, the last one it goes, we started off with hearing, dull of hearing. The last sense it goes, they tell me, 
before a person passes on in death is the, is the hearing. Uh, we can hear plumb up to the end. And uh, so uh, we need our sense of hearing. I heard a story about a, a, a man, he, he was in intensive care and uh, he had had a motorcycle wreck and they wouldn't even tend to him. They pushed him back over in the corner and, and he could hear them, but he couldn't respond. There's people like that today that they can hear, but they can't respond. And he heard them say, he's not going to make it work on somebody else. He said, I, I wanted to make it and I wanted to tell him, but I have, had no way of getting it out. He was fighting within himself to say something, but he couldn't. And then a little bit, they came back and they said, he's gone, take him to the morgue. And he didn't want to go to the morgue, but he had no way of telling them. So uh, uh, they got his little cart and started off with him to the morgue. And the Lord so graciously let him cough. So if you can't acknowledge the word of God, just cough. I see people that, you, when you see people in, uh, I've had relatives die and at the end, they didn't want anything to eat. And when you see people that they're not hungry, they have no appetite, uh, they don't want to participate, then you know that it's getting near the end. My wife is a good cook, and I uh, love to eat her cooking. But when I come in, the first thing I can do, I can probably smell it. I'm not full yet. Then I, maybe she has my favorite meal, pinto beans, cornbread, and fried potatoes, I might can hear those potatoes popping in the pan. I look over there and see it. Uh, I go over there and touch one of those potatoes. Uh, I smell them. I, I, but the only good I'll get out of it is if I sit down and start raking that stuff in and taste it. You can come to church and you can, you can listen and you can do all those things, but until you sit down and taste, you, uh, you're not doing you're not doing any good. Um, my daughter, when she was little, she'd want to eat potatoes with her fingers. And she asked her mother, can I eat the potatoes with my fingers? She said, if we don't have company, you can. If we have company, you have to eat them with a fork. So uh, uh, another sense is sin. I hear people saying, I, I don't see why Brother Dale uh, keeps harping on us to come to church. The uh, Samson whenever he got tangled up with Delilah, they gouged his eyes out. But he got blind spiritually before he got blind um, naturally. And another one is feeling. Uh, we used to have feelings to pray for somebody, go see somebody. And I encourage us to keep doing those. Uh, so seeing, hearing... Another one is smelling. Uh, if you don't think smelling is important, try s s smelling you an onion and eating an apple and see how your apple tastes. Uh, I've got this garbage can in my room, and like I said, sometimes my smelling is not that great, and my wife has got the keenest sense of smell, it, th it seems to me, on planet Earth, and she'll come in and she'll say, shoo-wee, what is that? And I don't know. I've been in there with that garbage all the time. If uh, the Word of God will cleanse you and, and wash you, we're washed by the Word. If you don't get a, a cleansing from the Word, you'll start stinking. And um, and tasting, I've, I've said about, you know, uh, if I was coming home and I was expecting that meal I just told you about, fried potatoes, pinto beans, and cornbread, and I stopped off at the store and didn't know my wife had that meal and I got some, a candy bar and a drink and a bag of chips. I'm not going to be hungry because I was I fill up on junk. So that's the same way with this. You're not hungry for the Word of God because you fill up on junk. Um, we we need to be be hungry for the Word of God and feeling. We used to like I said we used to have feelings to go do things. Uh, the Lord would bid us to do things and. I remember one time uh, my wife asked me, I was going to a meeting in Birmingham, and she said, would you mind if it's 80, and I, we had a, a, a contest where I worked for a slogan for 1981, 
and we were required to send 11, uh, 10 in. So I went to this district meeting in Birmingham, and before I left, uh, the, my wife said uh, she felt like giving somebody $25, which that was about like, uh, that was about a week's worth of groceries, so don't laugh at that. So I said, fine with me. And uh, I got down to Birmingham. They had the banners up for the winning slogan. I didn't pay any attention to it because I didn't think mine merited winning. So uh, uh, the man said, the winning slogan is on one of these banners, and they've won $25. I didn't even look. And he said, oh, well, I guess I'll sit it back, put it back in my pocket. And I, I said, that's mine. So I got the $25. I came home, and my wife met me at the door. Or, or told me, she said, she act like she dreaded telling me. She said, Dale, when I got ready to give those people $25, I just couldn't do it. And I gave them 50. And I said, I got you covered. I got you covered. So that's the, if I wish the Lord would bid me, that's one of the biggest blessings you have. Uh, but I was talking about her meeting me at the door. I don't know that she did that, but you know how it is when you come home and the wife meets you at the door and and you, she says, uh, the kids misbehave, the washer tore up, the car's not acting right. And you said, thank you, thank you, baby. It's good to be home. So, But uh, I see people that they're losing their senses. Spiritually, they're losing their senses. They're dying, just like hospice or, or the people of the medical field can tell when somebody's at the point of death. You can look around and see them. You see them in church, and they're looking out the window at an airplane, or they're thumbing through a song book or whatever they're doing. So uh, you can just about see those people. You, you just know what's happening. We need to be on meat. We need to have our senses exercised. I hope you got something out of this today. If you did, uh, I hope I can bring something else. And I love you and may God bless you.